So I'm really excited about the teen program ideas that I'm going to share with you. And I just want to reiterate, as we've all been saying, that we have way more content on these slides than we can cover in the time that we're given. So please go to the CLA website, download our PowerPoints, verbatim, all of my speaker's notes are on there. It has all the URLs, the prices for things, the ideas that I have that I'm not going to be able to get to during this presentation. So when I first heard that the theme was night, I immediately thought of creatures of the night, but not the sparkly vampires because they have had their time in the spotlight. I was thinking of zombies and werewolves. Zombies are super hot right now. There has been tons of books published in YA recently that I'll go into a little bit later. And you can hardly turn on your TV, go to a movie or play a video game without encountering some type of zombie. So what better way to wrap up your summer reading or to kick it off than to have a Creatures of the Night party? It's hard to quantify this party to really give you a cost of what this would be because there are so many variables. It can be as long or as short as you want and obviously if it's a longer program you're going to want to incorporate more activities that can increase your cost. Jennifer is going to talk later in the workshop about a multi-library lock-in program and I think this would be a great way to participate in that because who wouldn't want to get locked in the library with a bunch of zombies and werewolves? <laughs> I recommend incorporating some active games and some passive games to appeal to the variety of teens that will be at your program. And to help with the decor, encourage your teens to come dressed up. It just adds that much more to the ambiance and you can spend less money on putting things up if your teens are already dressed up. To encourage that, or if you think your teens probably won't come dressed up, create a makeup station. You can go to the 99 cent store and get sponge applicators and inexpensive face makeup and set up a little station. Be sure to have wipes and mirrors so they can see what they're doing as well. You can also go to Goodwill and get old clothes and just shred them for zombie wear and go buy really inexpensive fake fur so that the teens can make their own werewolf ears and then paint on whiskers. Then you could have a costume contest if you want to incentivize this, or you could just do a runway show so everybody can show off their looks. Once they're all dressed up, then it's time to play some zombie games. And these are really great because most of them only require the teens. So the first is zombie tag, and this is just like normal tag, but with a zombie twist. All of the rules are available online, and I really recommend that you have a large space for this. This would be great for if you were doing an overnight lock-in kind of a thing, because then you'd be the only ones in the library and they could really go crazy. But be sure to establish ground rules from the beginning, like what areas are off limits and that kind of a thing. Zombie Relay is a race where you divide up your teens and you use a bag of zombie parts that I found at Party City for $10 and they have to race across the room carrying these zombie body parts in different ways. And then the last thing is, um, Lori, can you hold up that shadow art book? I found this book on the clearance section at Barnes & Noble for $8 and I thought that would be so cool to do zom or, I'm sorry, um, shadow charades. All you need is a dark space and a really strong flashlight or spotlight and then you just let the kids go at it and they can play charades with each other using their hands. There are tons of great passive games as well that you can just set out there and let them play at their own leisure. Um, Zombie Gami is a book that I have there on the end of the table and all you have to do is provide the paper. That same author also does Monster Gami if you want to expand this to other creatures of the night including monsters. Zombie Flux and zombie dice are very inexpensive and very popular. Pin the part on the zombie <laughs> would be the lower left-hand corner picture. That is a 72-inch jointed cutout that I bought at Party City for $9.99. And then I just printed out internal organs and laminated them. Then you just blindfold your teens and let them at it. The zombie, apoc or, I'm sorry, zombie target practice, you use the exact same cutout, you can get two of them, and then buy Nerf dart guns. And they're very inexpensive, and I'm actually going to repurpose the dart guns in March. I'm going to have a Hunger Games movie release party. So that's going to be one of the districts where they get to learn the different um, survival skills. So think about ways that you can repurpose these things as well. Zombie Apocalypse Survival Challenge is represented by the upper right-hand corner box. You basically lay out a whole list of items on a table and then the teens have to come up and pick the seven most important things that they would need if a zombie apocalypse were to break out. And the list of items and their associated point values is all available online. For Oh, there's one more thing that I found after I turned this presentation in, and it's a website called MakeMeAZombie.com. And you can just set up your laptop, have that website open, the teens can take a picture of themselves and upload it, and then zombify themselves, which is pretty cool. 
We can't forget about the werewolves. So for passive games for werewolves, we have Werewolf Mafia, which you can purchase. It's like $30. Or um, some really ingenious librarian made a free downloadable version that you can print out and the information's all on the slides. There's also a werewolf name generator. So if you already have a laptop up for zombifying, you can have another tab open for the werewolf name generator. My name is Jana Lowell. <laughs> These passive games require an initial investment on your part, but they are great to just set out in your teen area while, for teens to play while they're waiting for their computer time, and you can absolutely repurpose them for other events as well. We all know it wouldn't be a party without food, and there are so many creative ideas, especially right now, with Halloween just having ended, that there are just amazing creepy treats out there. There are brain cupcakes. The one on the left, you would pipe by hand with icing. The one on the right is a, a mold that you can make. All the information's on there. Werewolf cupcakes, the werewolf claws. I was in Michael's looking for other stuff, and I came across this on the clearance table. It's actually a witch finger, but you could totally pass it off as a werewolf claw. <laughs> Um, severed toes in bandages are basically pigs in a blanket, but a little bloodier. Or you can leave the bandages off and then they're just hot dogs. <laughs> and then werewolf puppy chow is delicious sweet Chex Mix. I make this every Christmas and I call it reindeer chow. But no matter what you call it, it's amazing. And if you serve it in dog food bowls and make them eat it with their, without their hands, it adds a great werewolfy touch. So some other considerations, if you have the budget and you want to incentivize these activities, you can give away giveaways, prizes. These are all different examples of things that I purchased in the after Halloween sales, and you might still be able to find stuff, especially at Michael's. Um, little balls, I mean, those things were all less than like 50 cents. The Mad Libs are really fun and inexpensive. Some of the other things, like the Wacka Zombie and the Pata Zombie, I can't even open that. I'm so afraid of what that's going to look like. <laughs> they were a little bit more expensive, but could be really great prizes if you're only going to buy one of them. For decor, again, have your teens dress up. Scene setters make a big visual impact, but just ask your colleagues if you could borrow old Halloween decorations, or maybe your library already has some of this stuff. Hit up the after Halloween sales, and I also want to encourage you, if you don't already know this, ask for the educator discount when you go to Michaels or Joanne Fabrics, Barnes & Noble, Party City. They consider librarians educators, because we are, and you can save 15 to 20% on top of what you're already paying or whatever coupons you have. Again, I really want to do a flash mob. So if you're going to do a Creatures of the Night party, what better way to advertise it than an homage to Michael Jackson's thriller? Everybody knows the moves. They're very easy. The teens would absolutely freak out if they saw you all dressed up like a zombie and doing a flash mob. So it would get their attention in a very, very memorable way. I wanted to give you some other great resources. Karen Jensen does this Teen Librarian's Toolbox blog, and it's fantastic. She provides everything for free, and specifically related to this, she has a post called What's the Deal with Zombies that provides a really good justification if you, like me, have parents that are a little bit reluctant to let their kids read Harry Potter or vampire -y things, they're probably going to object to zombies and werewolves. So she has a really good justification for why you can do these kind of programs, and I recommend that. Oh no, I'm so out of time. OK, well, I'm out of time. There's lots of other great resources on here please 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 download this lots of great book club ideas and um, a really great astrophysicist from New York who will come to California for $350 if he can book a block of programs we've already booked him for seven things in Southern California so he'll be here in July his name is Kevin Manning his information is on here you can go through me through my contact information or you can go through him and he comes very very highly recommended he's a former NASA um, Consultant. So, sorry. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Yes, thank you, Joanne. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about, um, I have 11 ideas to fit into seven and a half minutes, so I'm going to go fast, but again, as Joanna said, everything's online, and I do include detailed instructions as well as um, supply lists and costs um, on the handout online, so please go there if you need more information. So first, I'm Glow in the Dark scavenger hunt. Um, the idea here is you create a scavenger hunt. Um, you do have to write the, the clues yourself because only you know what um, places there are in your library, but you give the teens a clue, and it leads them to, um, to like a little place in your library that has um, glow-in-the-dark items and you give them a little black light flashlight so that they can find them and they'll glow underneath the flashlight and then um, they'll also find another clue to lead them to the next place to lead them to the next place etc through the library and um, th you can do this for about forty dollars divide your groups your teens into groups of um, you know four or five and it'll cost you forty dollars for five black light flashlights and also a um, package of glow paints because the items that you're going to hide are probably going to be just bottle caps that you paint or whatnot that's 
for the cheap version. If you have a little bit more money to spend, you can buy glow items from Oriental Trading Company, etc. Okay, so nighttime ninja challenge. Um, you may not know this, but I'm actually a ninja. And um, so I have developed a training technique for your teens to teach them all how to be ninjas too. And of course, you know, who doesn't want a bunch of ninja teens in their library? So um, it, basically these are things like, you know, learning patience, um, because you have to be patient if you're a ninja. And um, they do that by building a card of, or a tower of cards and, um, you know, endurance by having a hula hoop marathon. So there's a variety of techniques and, you know, seriously, um, I, you know, I have a ton of ideas and those are all on the website, but um, if you want to make this as cheap as possible, you can choose ideas that you already have supplies for or that you can find in your library. They're interchangeable really, just as long as you can come up with a reason that a ninja would need to do that activity. Okay, and then, um, you know, another camping party. I know that um, the earlier group did this as well. Um, but the idea here is to um, read ghost stories. Maybe this is the culmination of a scary story um, contest that you might have in your library. And um, you can have the teens read their own stories. Maybe you have a couple of books that you're going to read from as well. And um, make s'mores. And I, you know, I know Barbara's using an oven she made herself because she's very crafty. Um, but you might also use a toaster oven or um, a microwave to make those as well. Well. And um, I also have a tent there because I was thinking that you could um, have like a scary scene inside the tent and dare the kids to go into it one at a time, or maybe you have a fortune teller inside, you know, fake fortune teller, and they can tell the teens' fortunes when they go inside. And then um, Jeopardy. I mean, obviously Jeopardy is nothing new, but I did um, write a whole Jeopardy game with questions and answers that you can just take off the website. And um, you know, it, there's all these categories, including shadow animals, so they can um, make their little shadow animals. And um, that can be a free program, up to as much as you want to spend if you want to give out prizes. And next we got Insomniac Cafe. Um, this one, you know, just another way to bring food into the library and make it nighttime themed. Um, so basically you're going to teach them how to make different midnight snacks. And I think I have popcorn balls and um, make your own hot cocoa and things like that. But really you can do whatever um, recipe that you want to do that you can afford the supplies for. Okay, and then Shrinky Dinks. I've presented Shrinky Dinks before, but what, what is better than Shrinky Dinks? Glove in the dark Shrinky Dinks. And so Joanna's got my sample over here, but basically what you're doing is you're making a Shrinky Dink, and you can use toaster ovens. You don't actually need to have a real oven. Um, and then you paint the glow in the dark paint on the back side, kind of thickly, so it um, shows through. And then maybe accents on the front side. And it costs about $40 for 20 teens. That gives you two sheets of Shrinky Dink paper for, for each teen. It gives you some um, keychain pieces so that they can make them into keychains and it also gives you um, the twine so they can make necklaces um, you can make it a little cheaper if you decide not to buy some of those pieces okay and this one okay I admit this is kind of a, a cheesy craft uh, my planet mobile Yes, <laughs> but you know what, I'm thinking for some of you that maybe don't have as much money, um, this is a Planet Mobile for teens. I've added some glow-in-the-dark paint to maybe tune it up a little bit. Um, if you want to make it a little less cheesy, you can, instead of that fabulous hanger on the top, you can use a piece of cardboard, cut it into an oval, maybe even paint it, the teens can paint it blue and add some stars from the glow-in-the-dark paint and then attach their, um, their planets to it. A little more expensive, but even more fun, is make those planets out of shrinky dinks and then add the glow paint and they can hang it up in their room at night and have it you know glow and be pretty okay so now glow in the dark bracelet um, this one is just a bracelet made with that lacing so whoever won this this is what your craft is um, so you're you're making it with lacing with glow in the dark beads all of that's available from Michaels it's very cheap and um, <laughs> and so I say at eleven dollars for twenty teens, but actually I was wrong. There's more lacing in that roll than I thought, so it's about eight dollars. So a very inexpensive craft. And then lanterns. Um, so with the lanterns, I put two different samples up here. I've done the lantern on the left before, and um, all you really need is a jar. You can I've bought jars before, or not jars, but like candle holders, but you can make them a little more lantern-y by just using jars you find in your um, your fridge. You know, they have kind of that lantern-y type shape. And um, there's also a craft that you can do that it makes Japanese paper lanterns, and um, you can buy the supplies for that from any art supply store, but you can also buy it from Dick Blick, which we have downtown. So both of those crafts are 20 to $30, depending on how much of the supplies you buy. Okay, and this is very similar to what Anna and Barbara presented earlier for tweens, a star chart. Um, 
basically what I was thinking here is that you just post, you print out the star chart from online. If you search printable star chart, you'll find them and um, black out the names of the, um, of the constellations, post it on your bulletin board and give your teens a little, not an answer key, but an answer sheet. They can fill it out, stick it in the, um, in the box, and then you can draw a winner from all the people who got them correct. So just an, a way to involve your teens um, at a time when you maybe don't have time to do a program. And this is my favorite craft. It's actually a fake neon sign. Um, this is my really fabulous example. It says, wow. Um, and this is a, a neon sign that's actually going to, <laughs> yeah, mom. Um, in any case, it's actually going to glow under a black light. So that's why I gave out the black light on the side. In any case, what it's made out of is, um, is fish tank piping. And um, what you do is you take the ink pad from a highlighter, stick it in some water, and it's actually fairly easy to get them out of there. I did it myself. You um, put that in a bucket of water and um, let it kind of permeate and then you have to kind of siphon it into the tube but I, I promise I did it myself and I didn't eat any um, any water with you know highlighter in it so um, it's fairly easy to do and then you glue gun both sides let it kind of you know harden up and then glue gun it to the board now again my sample is a little bit on the cheesy side because it's on that ugly cardboard board but um, you can put it on poster board or you can paint the backing etc and then send your teens home with it and um, it actually will glow a little bit um, without the fluorescent because the tubing glows too. And that's all I have for you. Oh, and I didn't say that that is about $30 to make for 20 teens because the, the piping is actually pretty cheap. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you very much.